Whenever I can integrate my martial arts training into my cardio, I do. So that's what I'm about to show you guys right now. I'm gonna show you a really basic cardiovascular workout that you can do with any kind of a punching bag that is some of my uh, very basic level, all right? Something to remember is punches follow kicks, kicks follow punches. You wanna use good form, be making sure when you're throwing stuff, getting back to your base position with your hands up, elbows in here. Okay, let me show you real quick your, your start position. Your start position is gonna be here. You're gonna to wanna to limit this a lot of times. This is my martial arts is that I use is a combination of Muay Thai, Jeet Kune Do, Mudokan Taekwondo. Uh, I've trained under Sensei Mike Hollowball, one of the greatest uh, martial artists and, and fighters to ever live. Knocked out Chuck Norris in an exhibition fight. He was a seven-time world champion kickboxer, ninth degree black belt in Budokan Taekwondo. That's my sensei. Um, I've also cross-trained all over the world, so, and I've been in over 500 altercations between bar fights, street fights, things of that nature, working security, and then private security contracting overseas, all that kind of stuff. So that's where my knowledge base comes from, and I'm gonna show you guys this is a street defense, okay? It's not ring, it's not anything else, street defense. So the, your start position is always gonna be here, okay? And one thing you can do is you can turn your start position into a defensive looking position. So that's here, your hands open, and it can very easily come back, protect your face. Elbows protect in here, that comes from Jeet Kune Do. I can protect elbows from coming punches, elbows coming in kicks, okay? I can come here and protect, come here. And protect. All right. Okay guys, so, in a street fight, you're not gonna wanna use your fists, okay? Because you'll break your knuckles, you'll break all the small bones of your hands. You can probably see all these little scars on my knuckles here. Um, that's one of the reasons that I designed the Bone Breaker Self-Defense Keychain is to, because it, it sits in here in your hand and strengthens these small bones here and also protects your knuckles, right? If you don't have a Bone Breaker Keychain and you get into a street fight, you don't wanna use your fists, you'll break your hands, okay? Some of the best uh, martial artists out there that I've met and trained with, um, I'll give a shout out to Jared Wahongi. We were talking about this at one point in time and he was telling me how he was working at a club near that I was working at and he punched a guy uh, and broke his knuckles. Um, I've actually never broke my knuckles uh, but because I do a lot of knuckle strengthening and I've done that over for a lot of years but you know, most people haven't spent 10 years strengthening the small bones of their hands. So that's something that uh, I want to tell you, I can hit a heavy bag, you know, easily with, with, without gloves on. So I'll show you both, but I just wanted to throw that in there. So some open hand strikes you guys can use in the street. You're going to be in here, side profile, in here like this, and just open hand strikes, okay? Open hand strike, you can ridge hand, knife hand, okay? Ridge hand, okay? If they duck that ridge hand, or you can pull it in close, you can come here. That elbow stops at 90 degrees and you come back with the knife hand. So it looks like this, okay, full speed there. You can use all your elbows here, here, up, down elbow as well. All right, there's all that stuff. And then, like I said, those of you who have strength in your knuckles or if you have a bone breaker keychain, you can do closed fist stuff here, okay? Jack cross, jack cross. You can do hook, 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 okay? Any kind of that, you can do overhand right here, all right? Any kind of that stuff. You can use your kicks here, here, okay? Side kick, here, all right? Reverse kick, here, all right? You can do axe kick, which is here coming down. All right, you got all kind of options. And what you'll do is just some bag work and just run through this stuff. Okay, a couple more open hand strikes you can use, or one more is you have your, you have your vagus nerve, and then you have your eardrum here. So it's just an open hand slap to this area any way it hits, or you can turn the hand this way if you see it's not gonna hit the ear itself. You can try and hit here or here like that, but just an open hand slap to the side of the face like this, okay? Does a lot of damage. Like I said, you can turn it in sideways and everything comes from the ground, guys. So you, you wanna get that hip twist in there. Same thing as throwing a hook. You wanna put that hip and knee into it. So if I'm in here, even though I'm really close, I can still really, drive that hook, okay? A little combo that I like to use with the hook is the drop, so I drop here, and then come up over the top. Drop, and then come up over the top. Make sure you're getting back and protecting yourself on these, and then once we get into it for cardio, we just go through and do warm up here. Work 
those movements. Work, work. Punches, follow kicks, kicks, follow punches. Here, 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 right? Here. And just go through and get that heart rate up, guys. Something else when doing bag work is you want to get that speed and snap into it. Power is mass times velocity squared. That means the speed of your, of your punch or your kick or your strike is twice as important as the mass behind it. I'm a big guy, okay? 240, 250 pounds right now. If I can move quickly, that means I'm really doing some damage. Let me show you what I'm talking about. There's no reason to pull back when you're doing bag work, okay? A lot of people might say, oh, an open hand strike might not be that effective. Watch this, watch me get that snap, that body twist, and really get that pop and hand speed into it. Even from close right here, I can just, all right, that's a lot of power. All right. Those are open hand strikes that aren't gonna break the small bones in my hand. Something else that's really effective is a, especially being a bigger guy, is somebody that can kick and kick with flexibility. Nobody's expecting me to be able to kick him in the face. So if that's something that I can train that's really gonna train to my advantage, that's something I train. I'll give you guys an example of that. Might be throwing some moves here, jab, jab, and then just unsuspectingly just, all right, that high kick, right? Just, if you can really throw that out of nowhere, it's a huge advantage. Another thing to set that up is maybe like a reverse kick. So I'm coming here, boom the reverse, or low, just tapping, leg, leg, jab, jab, leg, and then to the face. So just really work those combinations and try and learn things that may not be expected. I'll show you another example, all right? I'm kicking here, here, okay, here. Notice how the difference I'm throwing, this is a traditional Muay Thai roundhouse. Go, go, go. Okay, rather than uh, Taekwondo roundhouse, which is here. All right, now watch. Muay Thai, Muay Thai, pull it in to the front kick. So I have Muay Thai, Muay Thai front kick, and they never see that front kick coming. Okay, something like that. 